Hi everyone, welcome. I thought I would do a follow-up video to my British Flag Theorem video, but I thought I would do it in this style, kind of live, kind of unscripted, low-key, uh, just to make my life a little bit easier. And I thought it would be a nice opportunity though to talk about some of the things that I missed out because when I make these videos, I make choices, some things I don't include. Otherwise, it will just turn it into a, a list of facts. Uh, and well, you could just read the Wikipedia entry if that's what you wanted. So I don't want to do that when I make these videos, but there are some things that I left out. So maybe it would be fun to talk about those now here in this video, and uh, maybe look at some of your comments and questions, that kind of thing as well. Uh, so let's talk about the British flag theorem. So to remind you, British flag theorem said uh, that there was a rectangle. So you had a rectangle and then you have a point. And we connect that point to two sort of opposite, diagonally opposite corners, we call those lengths A and B. And then the other two diagonally opposite corners, and we call those C and D. And then we had a formula for it. A squared plus B squared equals C squared plus D squared. That was the British flag theorem. I did it because, well, I was reminded of it again. I did see it before and I was reminded of it recently. And I thought, do you know what? That's kind of fun. That's kind of quirky. Where in the UK, there's a thing going on. Uh, it's uh, the Jubilee. It's a queen thing. The queen's been queen for ages. So we're having a party, apparently. Uh, and I thought there's going to be some maths teachers who want uh, some sort of Jubilee themed thing to do. Uh, in their maths classes. So I thought that's an opportunity. I'll help out the maths teachers and for everyone else, they might enjoy it as well. So that was the British flag theorem, but there are some variations of this. People did ask me if there were uh, variations that you could do with this. Absolutely you can. So for example, I didn't mention that we could do it in, in a 3D way. So, so imagine we've got our rectangle uh, let's say in the plane like that. So we've got a rectangle here, flat in the plane, and then we add our point above the plane. So we've added height to the idea. So we've got a point above here, and then we connect that point to the four corners of the rectangle. Same sort of setup, but the point is floating up here. We call those diagonals A and B, C and D, then British flag theorem still works. A squared plus B squared, equals c squared plus d squared. That's still true, but we have added height here. So it's like a three-dimensional Pythagoras that we need. Now, uh, I'm not gonna prove that here. That's not what I want to do in this video, but uh, I think the people who watch these kind of videos might be able to prove that anyway. So you need your 3D Pythagoras with a bit of height in there. Can you prove the three-dimensional British flag theorem? A little challenge for you. And what I thought I would do is uh, put the proof at the end of the video. Right? And I'll just flash it up, right? It will just be written out and I'll flash up the proof at the end of the video. So you can check your work if you would like. So that's kind of like a 3D version. I mean, we could go into a cuboid as well. So imagine a cuboid, so a rectangle, but now we've got height, width, and depth. So same sort of idea. There's big fish, little fish, cardboard box. Okay, so there's our cuboid. And let's say we've got opposite corners, by which I mean if we took the bottom left corner and the top right corner on the opposite face, so they're diagonally opposite in that they go across a space diagonal through the cuboid. So if they've got them diagonally opposite like that, let's have our point, maybe it's inside the cuboid, bop, then we'll connect those to those two opposite corners. We'll call those lengths A and B. We do that again with another pair of opposite corners. We'll call those lengths C and D. You get the same expression. So you get A squared plus B squared equals C squared plus D squared. Again, 3D Pythag for that. I offer that to you as a challenge if you want to try and prove that. Uh, I find these things fun to prove. They're not too difficult. I think you'll be okay. I think what's more interesting as a challenge though, and someone did ask me about this, is a, a parallelogram. So it was a trolley mouse. Hi there. Hi trolley mouse. Uh, they asked me about doing this with a parallelogram. Now that was an interesting question because there is a version for parallelograms slightly different to uh, the British flag theorem I showed you for rectangles. 
and when I was prepping the video, obviously I searched for British Flag Theorem to see if there was any interesting facts about it. Wikipedia comes up, obviously, and they say on the Wikipedia page, um, there is a version of British Flag Theorem for parallelograms, and it gives a statement, no proof. Um, there is a citation, but it just goes to the statement without the proof. So, I actually did prove it, um, or a version, I think I've proven it, and uh, maybe I'll give this to you as the challenge. So, here's your parallelogram. All right, we've got our parallelogram, okay. It's British Flag Theorem set up. There's a point. We've got our diagonals here, A and B, C and D. Now, in the British Flag Theorem, we would say A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared plus D squared. That's not true for the parallelogram. No, they're not equal. So instead, we're not going to look at that. We're going to look at the difference. So we're going to look at A squared plus B squared subtract C squared plus D squared. Right. So we're looking at that. Now, the statement on Wikipedia, it said that that difference is a value that is independent of the choice of point that you make. Right. So it's independent. So instead of being dependent on the choice of point, it is some sort of property of the parallelogram. And that's all it said. That's kind of vague. If you want to, um, you could try and prove that statement as it is. I had a go. I think I know what they meant. I could be wrong, but it might be nice to give you something to aim for. So if I do this then, all right, let's try this out. So this is what I worked it out to be. Uh, so if we say that the horizontal side length here, we call that S, right? S for side length. And this overhang, this horizontal overhang here, we call that T, that's the horizontal overhang. I worked out that that value is equal to 2ST. Uh, so that's what I've worked it out to be, and that would be a property of the parallelogram itself. And uh, I invite you to uh, try and prove it. Again, at the end of the video, I think I'm going to flash up the proof. Just handwritten notes, but I'll put it up there so you, uh, you can see if you got the same thing I got. I mean, maybe you didn't. I don't know. Uh, so other questions people asked me. Now, this was a nice one. This was from Mad Hatter. Hi, Mad Hatter. And they asked me, if there was a, a version we could do of the British flag theorem, so just the rectangle, but it was all integers. So the diagonals were integers and the side lengths were integers. Well, yes. In fact, I did an example in my video and it was all integers, uh, but people didn't notice that. And I don't blame you because I kind of buried it. Uh, so this was the example that I did. So I gave you this example and we had these diagonals, 350 was there, 120, 296, 222. But actually I did work it out to be all integers because I thought it would be nice. So I'll tell you what uh, the integer values were. So I've got here 280 along the bottom there, 72 along the bottom there, and it was 210 along the vertical and 96. There we go, along the vertical. So this is what I worked it out to be. There we go, we got it all in. And so I got it out to be all integers because what I've done here is I found four Pythagorean triples. So Pythagorean triples is when you can do Pythagoras theorems, but it's all integers. So I found four Pythagorean triples that fit together to make a rectangle. That actually wasn't easy. Maybe I've missed something obvious or something easy, which is perfectly possible. Uh, but I found that actually quite tricky to find these four Pythagorean triples. So you can scale Pythagorean triples. You know, it's perfectly valid to like double them or triple them or something like that. So you can start to fit them together. So if you find like common multiples, you can fit them together. But then you fit these two together, you fit the second and third one together, fit the third one and the fourth one together. And then the tricky bit is getting the fourth one and the first one to fit together because it's going in a, in a cycle like that. I actually found that kind of tricky. So I found this 
And that means that uh, actually we could half that and that would be that would work. We could double that, we could triple that. So that works and multiples of that would work. Um, and I don't know if there's more. I don't know how many more. I didn't look. Uh, so that's kind of interesting to see if there are more. Uh, other questions people gave me. Um, other people asked me, hey, come on, are there other flag theorems for my country? Uh, and I think that's great. Uh, we should have flag theorems for all the countries, just for fun, anyway. Um, someone did mention, and that was Alvin Belt, um, there is something called the Dutch flag um, sorting algorithm or theorem, which I hadn't heard of, so thank you for that, by the way. And it's uh, something in computing. Now, computing, that's not what I do. But the idea is, uh, imagine you had lots of balls, and they're red, white, and blue, and then you have to sort them into a group of red balls, a group of white balls, and a group of blue balls, and that's a, a sorting problem in computing. Uh, so that's called Dutch uh, flag theorem. And there's an American flag theorem, basically that idea, but with more stripes. Uh, so that's nice, I like that. And then so yeah, some people suggested uh, theorems for their own countries as well. I think that's really great. Um, so I think, really, um, that's all I wanted to say. I was going to end this video with kind of some kind of some sort of, here are the positive comments people wrote, all the things, nice things that people said to me. Uh, I've seen other people do that in videos like this. You know, hey, thank you for your positive comments. I do thank you for your positive comments. I did read them. I do appreciate them. And uh, I just, I can't, I can't do it. I can't read out people saying nice things about me. It's just, it, oh, it makes my skin crawl, patting yourself on the back like that. But I saw them and I really like them and there really should be more of that kind of positivity on YouTube. So thank you for doing that. I will leave you with my favorite comment though. Sorry to everyone else, but there was one comment that I loved. So it's comment of the week for me. And it was uh, Roger Kearns. Thank you, Roger, who simply said, Pythagoras theorem? Question mark. Brilliant. Love it. Yes. Comment of the week. No prizes. No prizes for that. Glory. Thank you very much. Glory is yours. You can have that. Uh, so, oh God, that's enough. So I'll leave that there. You will see now why these videos are scripted and why they're not just a list of facts. But I'll leave that there for now. And... Uh, Actually, here's a treat. Um, I already know there is a video for you next week. Imagine that, a video for you next week because I recorded it at the same time I did the Pythagoras one. So uh, it's already ready to go. Uh, it's gonna be quite different to this one. It's not gonna be like this. It's gonna be my usual kind of singing banana mode. It's not gonna be like this kind of video. Uh, so there are gonna be some differences in it. And you will know what that means when you see it next week. I will leave that there. I will say, have a great rest of your day. Um, thank you for watching. I don't know, I need a sign off line for these kind of videos. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.